Well, hi everyone, welcome back. And um, we're sort of concluding our series on the Antichrist at the moment. We've done a lot. We probably have not looked at every title uh, where people s seem to think it's talking about the Antichrist, like the Whore of Babylon, um, the Purple Beast, the frogs that have unclean spirits, all of these images from the book of Revelation. But we certainly have covered a lot of them. I would just like to ask the question to, to end this time, really. What does it do to your faith, or what will it do to your faith, to remove the idea that something really bad is going to happen, maybe in our lifetime or maybe in the future? Jesus said in the Gospels, stay awake, keep watch. You do not know the time, the day or the hour. He says, do not worry about tomorrow. You do not know what's around the corner. So we acknowledge that bad things will always happen and we're ready. Uh, we're ready for when Jesus will come back. But to say that there is definitely a moment that this person is going to come, this Antichrist, to me denies that whole foundation of you do not know the day or the hour because there's a plan, it's predicted, we know what's going to happen. I really think we have to be left in the unknown and really when we think about this idea of a rapture and the Christians are gone and God will refocus on the Jews, I really think dispensationalists have this idea that all the Jews are not going to be aware of what's going on. But, you know, I've, I've already interviewed some rabbis, uh, Jew, some Jewish people, who are familiar with these interpretations. So if this was all to be true and the rapture did happen, it's not going to take them by surprise because they already know of it. We really have to, um, I, I think, not be offensive to their intelligence because we're sort of assuming that every single Jewish person in the world will not know about the rapture or they will not know about this idea that God will refocus on the Jews once again. Uh, we really have to be careful. But for me, the most ultimate thing is that if God is going to go back to the old covenant and refocus on the nation of Israel again, it denies the new, coven the new covenant statement in which Jesus said his kingdom will never end. And it also says that the atoning sacrifice of Christ is not valid anymore. It will not work. So we really need to be careful when we uh, make these futuristic claims. There is no such thing as a, t as a timetable. There is no chronological countdown because we are instructed to keep watch and stay awake for you do not know what tomorrow brings. If there was a countdown and a timetable, we know what tomorrow is going to bring. So we conclude this time now looking at the Antichrist. I hope you get you find peace and hope from all these videos to find that all of this is a lie. Um, I mean, if there was an Antichrist, surely Jesus would have told his disciples about it. He references Satan many times. But if, if there was going to be an actual future Antichrist, don't you think he would have told them about it? Something as big as that? He knew that in the first century there would be false prophets because John called them Antichrists in the book of 1 John, 2 John. But this evolution of this idea that one man is going to come at the end of the world has serious problems with it. And uh, it basically comes from the, Jesu the Jesuit priest Francisco Ribera, who um, in the Council of Trent promoted this idea that the Antichrist is coming way down at the end um, into the future. So um, let, let you, um, I hope that you can have peace, that you can remove this idea that this person is coming.